Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today I'm going to be going over my top three most carried knives in 2024. And yes, we're only 13 days into the second month of 2024. Uh, so it's still early, but I wanted to talk about it. First up, we've got the Brian Brown Jaeger M V3. And if you're wondering why the lights are so bright, it's because the last time I checked out this knife, I got a couple comments saying that the lighting wasn't good enough or bright enough to see all the cool colors of this fat carbon dark matter red carbon fiber handle skills is it bright enough now keep the change you filthy animal oh my goodness it looks good it looks great this is one of those knives uh that i always saw the prior releases and i just wanted one this isn't the blade shape that's going to protect you in the gas station face off per se but it is so good looking the angle on this blade it kind of makes it look like a reverse tonto but not quite uh maybe a worn cliff but not quite and then of course this version has the flipper tab they did come out with these uh with the few versions that didn't have the flipper tab and only had the deployment hole. Personally, I like having both options. Um, the 3D milled titanium pocket clip is actually quite nice, and I love this overlay. I am such a sucker for dark matter red fat carbon fiber. It's not even funny. The V3, which is this version, uh, had exclusives with like 10 different retailers. And on this one, this is the St. Nick's Knives exclusive. They only made 80 of this variant with the dark matter red fat carbon fiber. So that makes it an instant collector's piece. Now, initially, when I first got this out of the box, I had a few small gripes like the blade centering, uh, like the action. Um, and, and you know what? All of that was really easily remedied. Um, the blade centering was off because the pivot was over tightened. So when I loosened that up, the action did get better. Now, if you ask somebody who's had any amount of Brian Brown Jaeger M's, they will tell you that this is not a guillotine and it's not necessarily meant to be. The main reason why it's not a guillotine is, is the tight super well done tolerances in the pivot itself in combination with a really good detent. Instead, you get a, I wouldn't call it a hydraulic action, but it's more of a controlled drop. If you hold open the lock bar, will it drop on your thumb? Yes, yes it will. And then just a quick flip home and it's all said and done. It's all good. Uh, everything about this knife, his fit and finish is absolutely fantastic. And I'm a huge fan of this backspacer, which protects the length of the blade, which I appreciate because this blade is perfect for utility cutting tasks. Uh, you don't, you can't buy these anymore, so I'm sorry. Um, but you know what? Maybe you can find one on the secondhand market if you're lucky. Next up, we've got the Max Ace Capsule, and this was a knife that I was super excited about. You know what? Like this is a knife that I picked up because every time I looked at it online everything just looks so satisfying. The thickness of the titanium liners, the Cerakoted titanium handle scales. Yes, these little scales on top of the titanium liners, they're also titanium, but this is the first time I've ever seen Cerakoted titanium on a knife. And uh, guys, I really like it. Um, even the pocket clip, it's a short pocket clip, which I really, really am thankful for uh, because this is not a huge knife. If that pocket clip had been any longer, it would have been annoying, but they made it the perfect length. Uh, it's also a ball bearing pocket clip, which is a bit of a shout out to Beg Knives. Uh, Todd Beg, one of the first people to ever use a ball bearing clip. They tell me that they invented it, so I believe them. Um, this one has a, a backspacer. It's not much of a backspacer, though. It's just enough for you know the people that want to put a lanyard on there. I could do without the lanyard, but aesthetically speaking, it's still pleasing. Also, we have jimping, a perfect amount of jimping, honestly. It allows you to get your thumb anywhere on the spine of that blade that you want. It's a Japanese style Tonto and the action is so good. <laughs> oh man, that's so good. Um, I really enjoy watching these garage stop pins moving back and forth on the spine of that blade. It's so good. This is quite possibly one of the most enjoyable front flipper only knives that I've ever come across. 
I suck at doing this one, you know, where, where you just do that. But even I can do that on this one. The D10 is perfectly tuned for a front flipper. Super easy to carry. Overbuilt goodness. And it's useful. Come on, the Max Ace Capsule. Guys, you can still get some of these. I will link them down below. But they go for about 228 bucks. All in all, definitely a very satisfying knife to carry. And last but certainly not least is a knife that comes in a custom made slip. That's right, it's a slip joint. The slip comes from my buddy Duties Daggers. And shout out to Kev, AKA Duties Daggers. Uh, he made this for me. And guys, if you want one of these, just hit up Duties Daggers on Instagram. Uh, pricing may vary depending upon what you want. Uh, this is what I wanted. It's been wearing in nicely. Uh, primarily because this has been in my pocket almost every single day since I had it. Uh, since this knife came in, it's just lived there because especially in the slip, it just it fits in my fifth pocket. So I sacrifice nothing by carrying this knife. And consequently, it's also the one that I end up using the most for those simple EDC tasks. This is the QSP Hedgehog TPK edition in Miami Vice Carbon Fiber and titanium bolsters. So this is a titanium build. Everything but the back spring and the uh, carbon fiber is titanium. And then of course the blade is 20 CV and it's the perfect cutting geometry. For, for most, I would say for anybody that has light EDC tasks, yeah, this is perfect. You know, if, if the primary task that you use this for is opening boxes or cutting down boxes, which is my primary use case for a knife, this will get the job done. Uh, this opens bags of food relatively easily. And you know what? When I got it, I got it with the intent of it becoming a primary EDC carry because of the size. I knew that it'd be really good for that. I absolutely love the dimension that you get when you just shift the light around those handle scales. The Miami Vice carbon fiber is so, so underrated. I'm a huge fan of it. You get the blues and the, the bright pastel oranges, and then, you know, you shift it into the light and you get the shimmer off the carbon fiber. Man, oh man. And I do believe that these are also still available. Uh, this particular one is about 150 bucks. Uh, you can get it on traditionalpocketknives.com. I will link that one. If you like the blade, you just don't want to spend the dough. They do have a budget version of this in 14C and Micardo. And I've actually reviewed that one. Um, and you can get those for more like, you know, 40, 50 bucks. And I would highly, highly recommend it. Um, and the best part again is that you don't have to sacrifice any carry space because it fits in the fifth pocket, especially when you pair it with something like, you know, a, a custom slip. That, that's just great. And then, of course, you put it in the slip, and every time you, you pull it out, it smells like leather. Just, yeah. Yeah, it gives it the kind of that, you know, classical look and feel. Who doesn't like the smell of leather in the morning? Walk and Talk is some of the best in the game, or so I'm told. I haven't reviewed a bunch of slip joints, but I can tell you that it is very satisfying, very pleasing to carry. I love carrying it because it takes care of a majority of the tasks that I need it for. And then, of course, because I'm also usually carrying something else, if I do need to access a pocket knife one-handed, I don't have to sacrifice any space to carry, say, this guy. But guys, these are my top three carried knives so far in 2024. Let me know what knives were your top three carries this year. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you haven't done so yet and you got this far, subscribe. And if you want to watch more awesome knife and EDC content, click on one of the videos that pops up next.